I want to share with you a thought that went through my mind. I'm not sure it went through anyone else's mind at the time that they saw the same event, but at least something that uh, I thought of, I thought maybe it would be uh, to some degree inspiring. So I was uh, watching past Wednesday uh, after uh, the inauguration. So I, was, I was saying, I have been saying Shir at that time, but right after she was over, so I went to check. I just wanted to see the event was swearing in. So I was watching it, and all of a sudden, like the imagery caught me. It's a very, very powerful one. That if you think about it, that there's such a tremendous transformation that takes place in a person that a split second before a person rises, the gadula rises to the post of being the president of the United States of America, they're pretty much a regular citizen. They're pretty much the same as you and I. They don't have uh, that, all that much uh, authority to do anything. And then a split second later, they're literally a different person, a totally different uh, entity. They're president of the United States of America. What changes? What happened? What process did the person undergo that somehow trans- transformed their entire agave, so to speak? And the answer is very clear. It's a shvur. It's an oath. And if you look even at the imagery of the oath of the shvur, it's taken, the oath of office that's taken, it's really something that, in a sense, we can be really very proud of because it came right from us. It's taken right out of Masech Shvuas, It's taken right out of the Chumash. It's taken right out of our Torah. I said the notion of taking a taking a shvua, invoking the Shem Hashem in the shvua, a person taking a shvua with what we call halacha nekitas chayfetz. There's a din when a person takes a shvua and days then, so they have to take the shvua holding a sefer Torah. They have to hold a holy uh, object. They have to hold the dover shel uh, kedusha. So then, uh, then only then is the shvua considered to be the highest possible level of a shvua, and that din is actually derived from the pasuk by Avinu. And Abravinu says to Elias, so he, he asks him to, to uh, in a sense, symbolically hold on to his bris mila. That was the Deva Kodosh, that was the Chayfetz of Kedusha that Abravinu had at the time. And therefore, we learn out from here a din for all generations that a Shvur requires an Akitas Chayfetz, requires a Sefer Torah. So even in the non Jewish world, it's understood that, that the way uh, an oath is taken, the most solemn moment uh, in time, is the person holds on to the Bible, puts the hand on, uh, on the Bible. And that's considered to be uh, the shvua that, that transforms an individual from being just a regular civil citizen to becoming the president of the United States of America. So I was thinking a little bit about that imagery of a shvua being, the, in a sense, the moment of truth, being what, what creates that change in a person's very essence and gives them a whole level of responsibility, authority and responsibility that didn't exist beforehand. And the truth is that that also comes from from Kalim's It also comes from Atari. It also comes right out of the Gemara Masechus Nida. The Gemara Masechus Nida tells us that a person's neshama, a person's soul, so prior to birth, so the soul's in Shemayim, and the soul doesn't really have all that much obligation, doesn't have any real job to do. It sits and learns Torah, it's very easy, there's no Yetzirah, there's nothing else going on, nothing else is happening in Shemayim. It's sitting and learning Torah with the Malach Yashores, being Nenem is a Bashkina, just uh, enjoying in, in, in the pleasantness and being in the presence of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's all the Neshama does. And then there's about to become the moment of truth. And the moment of transformation is about to take place, the Neshama is about to enter into the Guf and enter into this world. And it's going to be a very, very different world. It's going to be a world of challenges. It's going to be a world of decisions to be made and very, very important decisions that each and every person has to make. Decisions literally of Chaim and Mavis and Dein B'Gash, Ben Baruchnius. And what happens right before that moment? What imagery do Chazal depict for us right before the, the person enters into this world, right before the Shama and the Guf join together to become the human being that we know of? The Gemara tells us that there's a shvua that's administered. A person is given a shvua that the Shama swears that it's going to observe the mitzvah of Hashem. The Neshama swears, as David Amel said, Nishvati v'achayim of the Shvom Shvitei Tzidkecha. The Neshama swears an allegiance that it's going to be a tzaddik. Like the Havlof of Dallas, the same way we heard, the swearing of allegiance to protect and honor and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. So, Havdil, to protect, to honor, and defend the Constitution of Akadosh Baruch, the Torah Kedosha. That's the Constitution of Akadosh Baruch, and that's the Constitution, that's the blueprint of this world. And with the utmost seriousness, the Nisham swears to Akadosh Baruch that it will do its best job possible in this world. And it's only after that Shvur that Akadosh Baruch grants the Nisham the opportunity to join the group. 
You know, the Rav suggested that perhaps it's this Gemara that's the source for a principle in Halacha, that sometimes when a person is not acting up the bar, so again, under very limited circumstances, and again, we're not talking about the, how it plays out in the Halachic uh, realm today, but there's a notion of Kofid HaSashiyam HaRotzani, that the Beisin can sometimes uh, intercede and, and uh, coerce the person to do the Mitzvah Torah. And again, we're not giving any practical halachic um, ramifications of this, but there is a concept of Kofit HaSashiyam HaRotzani. What is that uh, based on? So the Ram has this famous understanding based on the Gemara Masehah Zabad Asra, that the reason why such a concept exists in halacha is because ultimately the rotzer of every single Jew is in the rotzer of Kodesh Baruch. That is my most penimious, that is my most deepest, the, the deepest recess of my heart and soul is to do the rotzer of Kodesh Baruch. Sometimes we get sidetracked with other things, and we have to sometimes peel away those layers of things that interfere with that rotzer to do the rotzer of Kodesh Baruch. Where did that come from? What's the source of that? inner recesses of a soul to do the Ratz of HaKadosh Baruch Why do we say that? Who says? Says the Rav the Shmuel says. Because that was your original commitment before you entered into the world. That was the tonight. That was the condition that HaKadosh Baruch let you enter into this world because you agreed, you swore, you swore an allegiance to do the Ratz of HaKadosh Baruch to protect, honor, and defend the constitution of HaKadosh Baruch So it was a very powerful moment the moment of swearing in, again, I, I can't say that uh, everybody in America was so uh, this imagery, but maybe some of us did. So for some reason, it, uh, this hit me. It hit me at the time, and I thought I would share with you and try to give a little bit of a chizuk. That as we're in this world, and we have decisions to make, and our decisions are very, very important ones, and a chayi b'mavaz kisat ufanacha, they're decisions of life and death. So don't forget, we're all mushboin v'aimdim. We all swore our allegiance one long, long time ago to Kedush Baruch Hu's Torah. Kedush Baruch Hu should give us a siyat and shvaya to, uh, to fulfill uh, the shvua that we took before we entered into this world. Mitch Abbasley.